We were like, we really, what do you want us to cut out? And they were like, well, we just don't like the idea of Batman fighting Superman. And I was like, I can't take that out. That's the movie. That's so ridiculous. Yes. They would have that kind of power. So it was crazy. So we really had to trim it super. It, it, it's, do it's, you think that affected the final version? I mean, if you see the director's cut of Batman vs. Superman, it's much better. It's a much better movie. I, in my opinion, it's a much better movie. Well, and, it's representative of what you actually wanted to create. Yeah. And I think that, that that's that's true of all the director's cuts that I've done is that I, it's just a glimpse into the why that the, you get to see better the why of the movie, the why of its origin, yeah. the, what it, how it, because like obviously something kept me awake for two years writing. Something right. kept me jazzed about like, fuck yeah, I can't wait to do this. I'm drawing, I draw, for Rebel Moon, like I drew 3,000 storyboards for that movie. Like that is like a lot of work, you know. That's a lot of work. To like, you know, to you got to care. That's five months of drawing after yeah. I've written the script. Wow. So I've written the script for a year and a half, and then I draw the movie for like another five months. Wow. It's fucking insane. Oh my god, you must have been going nuts. Yeah, it's you must so, have been missing Fortnite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was before Fortnite. If I had a, by the way, it's a good thing I didn't have Fortnite because I would have like <laughs> would have ruined everything. The problem with writing and with for me drawing is if I have one procrastination, I can do yes. one. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Because like if I look at that blank pad mm -hmm. and I look at the video controller, video right. game controller, I'm like, oh yeah, this is way more satisfying. Yeah. That, that thing was, wants to fuck me up. That pad is trying to fuck me up. The thing about mm -hmm. the, the delayed satisfaction though is that if you could force yourself to get to the pad, when you're done, you'll feel good. Oh, and if so you play good. the video game, you'll feel... Last night, I started fucking around in my office. I was just watching YouTube videos and looking at pool cues. And then I said, all right, go to work. And I snapped and I went to work and I worked for a couple hours. And when it was done, when I went to bed, I felt great. Awesome. No, I, I felt like I did it. I yeah. did something. I the agree. feeling of doing something is so much better than the feeling that you have to carry for hours of fucking off when you knew you were supposed to do something. No, 100%. I, I couldn't agree more. And then, by the way, and, and in the end, I did it. I did that work. And I'd show, I like when, you know, it, it, when we went to film the movie, and I've always drawn the storyboards for my movies. It's like a, it's 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 a problem, but it's 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 a thing that I do. It, it's my only process. It's funny because when I made Sucker Punch, I remember we were talking about it, and uh, I think it was my script supervisor. She said, "One day you're gonna like not need to draw these drawings, and you're just gonna, you know, you're not gonna need to spend that time." And it, it's just funny that like in retrospect, it's like obviously I have to draw the drawings. Like it, it's like let, like that's my process. Now I realize there's no way around it. There's no like you want a cheat, you know? Like I wish I had a cheat where I didn't have to draw the drawings. Where I'd be like, oh no, it's gonna be fine. I I think I can make it up on the day and it'll be good. And I do make it up on the day. But the truth is, that process of drawing is the process that I I vet a lot of the ideas in that. Drawing, it's not just drawing, it's writing as well. I'll change the script, I'll mm. do whatever, I'll be like, no, no, because that doesn't make sense. Look, mm. when I see it physically, I'm like, no, you can't, that doesn't work. So I have to re sort of construct it in the drawings a little bit sometimes. When did you start doing that? I started doing it, um, I did it throughout, I did it 300. Um, did you learn it from someone? I, no, I'd always drawn. Like I, I draw, and like you know, I'd gone to school for fine art, so I was always drawing shots and so. It's also a thing, like in film school or when you're trying to think of something. Movies take so much resource, right? You need like to make a movie. You're like basically an architect, and you have to convince someone to build a building, right? And it's so much work to convince people, like to invest, to dig the get all the cranes and the steel. It's like impossible. So drawing is like a little taste of it, right? So like I can make, these are the shots I want to make, right. right? So in a weird way, it's like, it's, 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 it's drawing that beautiful sketch of the building. In a lot of ways, that's what it's going to be, you know? Mm. So you can get a feeling for right. it. And I think that's what it does for me. It, it satisfies the, the impossible group activity that's going to require me to like convince people maybe that's why i love fountainhead you know like it's a, it's like that it's that process of like getting people to like believe in this thing 
that it's going to take resources and like so much crew and building and designing and all that other work that's down the road. It's the it's the drawing that I think is a little bit of a it's it satiates that desire a little bit for me. It gives them a framework too. There's like there's oh, something. it's hugely beneficial in the production process. Once they have that, they, everyone knows exactly what to do. Mm. You know, it's incredible tool. Once I have it, did you do it for Watchmen? A hundred percent. My Watchmen books are insane. Did you draw Doctor Manhattan's dick? Oh, of course. <laughs> That's the question. Yeah. Here's the question. You got Could to. you make that movie today? I don't know. Would they allow? I mean, that, like that's what's interesting, I, I, right? Someone once gave me a statistic of how much time Doctor Manhattan's cock is in the movie, like just full frontally in the film, and I think it's a fair amount. Like, it's I think it's the I think it's the only studio film it holds the record for most frontal nudity, male frontal nudity of any. You know, and it's kind of important. It's super important. Like he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck. Obviously, yeah. Like he walks around like that. He's a god. He's a god. Like what the fuck? You can't deal with it. Get the yeah. fuck. Like, I'll fucking vaporize you, or I don't even care what you think. You're yeah. a, you're a you're a cockroach. Yeah. It's like what does he say? He goes. He goes. The world's smartest man is no more dangerous to me than its smartest termite. <laughs> like it's like <laughs> such a cool thing to say. Like you know, like he's he doesn't like you know what I mean. It's like you really realize in the face of a god. Like he, he does. I've walked across the surface of the sun. Yeah, you know, he's like I don't. No, he was the coolest. He's the best. He's the coolest. And the transformation scene is fucking amazing. Uh, by the way, that one of my we were just talking about the other day. Like one of my favorite sequences in any movie I've made is his the. The birth sequence of Dr. Manhattan, the whole thing with the Philip, because we, it's Philip Glass did the music, right? We borrowed the music because I had heard that music and I was like, it's got to be this music. And then we tried to like, Tyler Bates, who's an amazing composer, he tried, we tried, I, I go, write me something that's better than this. And we just couldn't do it. So we just had to license it from, and I had to send Philip Glass the sequence and he watched and he said, okay. It's cool. <laughs> you can have the music. That's so cool. Yeah, because it's like, you know, it's just so, it's just yeah, so. Yeah, play this, play this. It's just so rad. I love this fucking scene. Here, here, this, that's Phil Glass, this music. Yeah, that's so rad. I love this fucking scene. Here, here, this, that's Philip Glass, this music. When he knows he's fucked. We built this giant oversized watch for those shots. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that's that Philip Glass. So good. That music is crazy. That fucking birth scene is insane. It's so good. It's, it's so insane. It's so good. It's the so skeleton funny. in the hallway with the muscles screaming. Oh, my God. I remember shooting that exactly like as if it was yesterday. Yeah. The, we had this air cannon. Boof, we had to fire at that guy with the mop. Mm -hmm. You know, because he, when he, boof, he like, boof, he 